Hi, I'm Lisa Director Davis, and I'm the Program Director for the John Main Center for Meditation and Interreligious Dialogue. And I enter these days with you with a very humbled sense of solidarity. Certainly in these past weeks, we've all shared many stories with our students, with our staff, faculty, and our fellow Jesuits here at the Georgetown community. We've asked them, how do you describe this experience of being evacuated and now sheltering into place? And many have described it as surreal and taxing, uncomfortable, and even desolate. We're still feeling the aftershocks of being evacuated from our dorms, the classrooms, the labs, the athletic fields, theaters and offices, hallways and your club hangouts, our sacred spaces, retreat centers, and our meditation center. And all these spaces held our best laid plans for the spring semester. And now we occupy new spaces, either alone or filled with family members, roommates perhaps. But what we all thought was going to be a temporary situation is now becoming our new norm. So I've been drawn to reflect upon this in-between time of evacuation and sheltering in place by reframing it as a particular experience of in-betweenness and looking at it as a spiritual metaphor for entering into a still point between being emptied out and dwelling with the mystery and the unknown. So how have you navigated this in-between time of evacuation? and sheltering in place? And what have been your spiritual compasses that you use to weather these very distressing experiences of being emptied out and dwelling with the uncertain? I've discovered, discovered over and over again that the ancient practices and traditions of contemplative prayer and meditation are a treasure trove of wisdom that can sustain and uphold us during these extreme times of external and internal crises. The Christian wisdom of the desert mothers and fathers from the third century have taught me about withdrawal, retreat, evacuation from, from the city and the marketplaces, and what does it mean to shelter in place, to go out into the desert and to dwell in a new space, and they call that their cell, a place of encountering the unknown and the divine in prayer. I've also been drawn to the writings of the American Tibetan Buddhist nun Pema Chodron, who writes about being comfortable with uncertainty or the places that scare you and writing a guide to fearlessness in these difficult times. Certainly the practice of silent meditation as taught by the Irish Benedictine monk John Main has rooted me in expanding my appreciation for the necessity of stillness, silence, and simplicity as a way of entering into these very difficult transitions and struggles with being emptied out. In the preface to Father John Krasavich's book, In the Heart of the Desert, Barry MacDonald writes that these spiritual masters show us by their examples and sayings how to confront the chaotic impulses of the soul, which drives away from the still point where God is waiting. So when I enter into stillness and silence, I try to draw my breath in or perhaps gaze at an icon, or meditate on a passage from scripture. And when I've done that, I've discovered that the Spirit of God is waiting for me, but not always in a way that I might recognize or understand. In stillness, I try to name the places in my heart and in my mind where I feel the emptiness, where I'm lacking, and where I feel afraid. Particularly now for those who are observing the season of Lent, the passage of the empty tomb, has been incredibly poignant and timely. And I'm drawn to see this passage through the eyes of Mary Magdalene. And like Mary Magdalene, I'm at the entrance of an empty tomb, a still point between dread and anticipation, this in-between time and space, the place that can scare us. And at the entrance, the perspective is that everything seems empty. It's no wonder that Mary is weary and confused and grieving. The emptiness of the tomb represents all that she thought was dead and buried, lost, unfulfilled, and unfinished. 
But those who were with her, who leaned into the emptiness, found that what they thought to be dead and lost has in fact been unbound and transformed. But most importantly, Mary is not alone at the entrance of this emptiness. She's actually called by name to recognize that in this still point, the Spirit of God is waiting for her in a transformed way as a gardener. And this gardener is the same one who tenderly calls us by name, the one who tends to our weeds, and the one who sows the possibility for new and transformed life at each time at the various entry points of all of our emptiness. The prayerful and the meditative practices of stillness can guide us to inch towards the empty tombs of our lives and strengthen us to have a capacity to face the unknown, especially in the chaos of crisis where the soul is tempted to be driven away. So all wisdom traditions say that the hardest part of any practice in any moment in any day is just showing up. And the spirituality of the desert teaches us that your main responsibility is to show up, to go to your cell, and to be still, and be open to how the divine mystery is revealed before you and within you. During this season of in-betweenness, let the cell, let the stillness, let the emptiness of the tomb teach you everything. In the midst of all this big drama that has been unleashed in our world, I hope you can find spaces and time to withdraw and notice the subtle and more gentle movements of your being. May you find ways to navigate to your still points where God is waiting to meet you in these demanding days of flux and in the deepening hope of spiritual transformation. Peace be with you.